Welcome folks, a video here on spanning sets. So as usual, we'll start off with the definition, the definition of a span of a set. And then we'll talk um, about determining whether a certain vector is in that collection. It turns out that answering this question goes back to uh, writing a certain vector as a linear combination of other vectors which in turn goes back to determining whether a certain linear system has a solution. Okay, from there we'll talk about the specific case of a spanning set of a null space. We saw last time how to represent solutions of a linear system as a linear combination of n minus r vectors, and today we'll make the connection between that solution of a homogeneous linear system as the null space of a certain matrix and, and express the vector form of that solution as a vector span. Okay, so here is the definition of a span. So given a set of vectors, here our vectors are u1 out to up. Their span here, um, again, span, the notation is angle bracket s, is a set of all possible linear combinations of those vectors in S. Okay, so as a set of all possible linear combinations, right, S is also a collection of vectors and um, it itself is a set of vectors. Okay, and generally, with just one exception, S is infinite. Um, notation. As a set, typically we write uh, the span of S is all alpha 1 U1 plus alpha 2 U2 all the way out to alpha P UP such that the alphas are complex numbers or, or sometimes we express this more concisely as the set of all linear combinations, right? And, and, and in this case, the sum alpha 1, alpha I, UI, where I goes from U from one to P is, is a set of all such linear combinations. Okay, so again here, a couple of points though. Um, the span of S is a set of vectors, and in the most general case, that set is infinite. Okay, so let's see an example. Here's a set of vectors U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5 from C4. And let's think about their span. So the first thing I want to argue to you is that that span is not empty, right? We can pretty quickly ge generate elements of the span of S. Here's one such element, this vector W, that's a linear combination of these U's, is certainly an element of the span of S. Okay, similarly, a different vector, say y, where y is u1 plus u3 plus u5 is also an element of, a sp of the span of s. I'll point out that we could do a really silly thing and think about taking zero parts of u1 plus zero parts of u2 plus zero parts of u3 plus zero parts of u4 plus zero parts of u5 and adding those together and of course, you would here get the zero vector. Now, since you can always do this, we know that the zero vector is always an element of the span of any set. More often, what we'll do is look at a set S and ask ourselves whether a given vector is an element of the span of S. Okay, so here's an element U. We want to know, is U an element of the span of S, and to answer that question, we have to address whether U can be written as a linear combination of U1 out to U5. Okay, so this is just the definition. U is an element of the span of S, right? U is an element of the span of S if there are some scalars, U alpha 1 to alpha 5, such that U can be written as a linear combination of the elements of s. Okay, so we talked about addressing whether a certain vector can be written as a linear combination of other vectors last time, and we saw that this 
question boils down to addressing whether a certain linear system is consistent, that is, whether it has a solution. Okay, so here is the augmented matrix that corresponds to the linear system that represents whether the vector u can be written as a linear combination of these other vectors. Okay, we can take this augmented matrix, reduce it to its reduced row echelon form. Here's that reduced row echelon form. In particular, we see that the last column is not a pivot. So yes, the linear system has a solution. So since the linear system has a solution, the vector u is a linear combination of u1 out to u5. So to answer the question of whether u is in the span of s, yes, u is in the span of s. Now, you might not be surprised to hear that this isn't always true. So for instance, here is a vector v, and we'll address whether this vector is in the span of s. Okay, so same setup here. We construct a linear system corresponding to the question, is V a linear combination of U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5? From that linear system, we can write the augmented matrix, reduce it to reduce row echelon form, and we see in this case that the last column is a pivot. So because the linear system is inconsistent, that is, it has no solution, we see that V is not a linear combination of U1 out to U5. So to address the question of whether V is an element of the span of S, the answer is no. V is not an element of the span of S. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to work with this question of span on the worksheet with a couple of our archetypes. So here, um, is uh, an, uh, a vector w, and um, I'm, I'm letting the set S contain vectors that come from the columns of the matrix associated with the linear system in archetype A. Okay, so go ahead and work through this on, on the worksheet. What you should find is that the first vector, the vector w, is in the span of s and you should find that the second vector this vector y is not an element of the span of s okay now to the extent that um to the extent that uh, there are some vectors for which the associated linear system doesn't have a solution we would sort of expect there to be some vectors that are not in the span of s and we see this is one of them this one is 2, 4, 3, not in the span of S. Okay, on the other hand, and you can work through this too, um, we can see that, that it's quick to cook up a vector that is in the span of S, and, and it's possible to determine um, that there are, are some vectors that are in the span of a set while others are not. Okay, and, and again, addressing whether a vector is in the span of S determines uh, requires addressing whether a certain system of linear equations is consistent. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself there. Um, on the other hand, I'll have you look at um, the set of vectors corresponding to the columns from archetype A. Okay, so in order to address whether this vector x is in the span of R, we'll go ahead and have a look at the corresponding linear system. Okay, so in this case, we see that x is in the span of R if x is alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha 3 v3 for some alphas, which is true if the linear system of A comma x has a solution. So what we'll do is cook up that linear system, reduce it to reduce row echelon form, and here's what we find. Okay, we find that the reduce row echelon form of the augmented matrix tells us that the solution of the linear system is 2, 4, negative 3. So in this case, we see that x can be written as a linear combination of the v's, 2v1 plus 4v2 
plus a negative 3v3, and that this expression is unique, right? So this is a little bit different than archetype A, where answering the question of span had several different answers. Now, what about an arbitrary vector? What if, what if z is some arbitrary vector in R3? Is z in the span of R? Well, similarly, addressing whether a vector, an arbitrary vector z is in the span of R requires us to address whether a certain linear system has a solution. Okay, and in this case, the coefficient matrix of that linear system is unique. Okay, since that coefficient matrix is non-singular, the linear system of A comma Z has a unique solution for any Z. Okay, we see that if any Z in C3 has Z in the span of R. Similarly, any Z in the span of R is automatically in C3. Now, the second statement is sort of obvious. The second statement says that the span of R is a subset of C3. But the first set is a little more interesting. The first set says, since any element of C3 is also an element of the span of R, that C3 is a subset of the span of R. Okay, we know from set equality, therefore, when one set is a subset of another and the other is a subset of the first thing, that the span of R is equal to C3. Okay, this is sort of a big deal, and this is characteristic of columns of matrices that are non-singular, as it turns out. So, so we'll get more into that a little bit later. So this is sort of a, a, a summary of what I just said a moment ago. Um, I guess here I've written B as the matrix in, instead, of, uh, instead of A. Pre previously I called it A, but it's, it's the same idea. Okay, so let's uh, change gears a little bit and talk about spanning sets of null spaces. Um, we know that a solution of a consistent linear system can be written as a linear combination of n minus r vectors plus one more. We know that given some matrix A, the null space of that matrix A is the set of all solutions to the corresponding homogeneous linear system. Therefore, we would expect that the null space of A ought to be able to be described as a linear combination of n minus r vectors. Okay, and here's a theorem that tells us that's exactly true. Suppose that A is an m by n matrix that B is the row equivalent matrix in reduced row echelon form with R pivot columns. Okay, we can similarly partition our column indices of our row reduced form into the set D indicating the dependent variables and the set F indicating the free variables. We can cook up N minus R vectors in a very special way where we pull ones in the rows corresponding to the free variables. Uh, we pull zeros in the rows corresponding to the free variables where they don't match. And we hit up the negative values just like we did in our last section. Then it turns out that the null space of A is exactly the span of those n minus r vectors. Okay, this is sort of a lot, and, and we'll see um, how to put this theorem into practice. As it turns out, this is just um, theorem VFSLS restated, right? The vector form of the solution of a linear system restated in the special case where we have a homogeneous linear system. And this is the take-home message here. The take-home message is that we can always express the null space of a matrix as the span of n minus r vectors, right, where that quantity n minus r comes from the reduced row echelon form. Okay, so illustration of the theorem with an example. Um, let's go ahead and have a look at the null space of this matrix A. Okay, so of course in order 
to identify the null space of a matrix, we solve the corresponding homogeneous linear system. Okay, so here we've taken our matrix, not the augmented matrix in this case, right? This is just the matrix, and reduce that matrix to a reduced row echelon form. Okay, so we can see that the solution of the corresponding homogeneous linear system five variables the augment or the uh, row reduce echelon form shows us that there are two free variables okay so according to the theorem we would expect that the null space of the matrix can be represented by the span of two vectors where um, where those vectors correspond to the free variables x3 and x5. So we'll start by writing the vector form of the solution to the corresponding homogeneous linear system. Okay, again, we expect that solutions have form x equals x3 plus some vector plus x5 times some vector. And we can fill in ones and zeros to ensure equality for those free variables. Okay, now we can fill in the other elements that correspond to the associated columns of the matrix. Okay, just like before, the elements for x1, x2, and x4, those dependent variables corresponding to x3, come from the third column of the reduced row echelon form and the elements corresponding to x1, x2, and x4, the dependent variables corresponding to the free variable x5, come from um, the, the fifth column. Okay, so we see in any case that the solution of the linear system a comma zero can be written as x3 plus Six minus six one one zero zero plus x five times minus four two zero th minus three one. Okay, so we can represent this efficiently as the span of two vectors when we define those vectors as u as as this one and and as this one. Okay, so if we assign z one to be the vector attached to x three and assign z2 to be the vector attached to, sorry, z2 to be the vector attached to x5, then the null space of A can be represented as the span of z1 and z2. Okay, here's another example. Let's go ahead and have a look at the null space of this um, larger matrix A. Okay, so just like we did before, we'll um, consider the homogeneous linear system and row reduce the matrix A, right? X is an element of the null space of A if X is an element of the corresponding, homo if X is a solution of the corresponding homogeneous linear system. Okay, here's the row reduce echelon form. We can pick off the different characteristics of this row reduce echelon form there are r equals to three pivots. Of course, we had originally n equal to six variables. So there are n minus r equal to three free variables. And we would expect the null space to be represented as a linear combination of those three variables. Okay, so here again is just all of that information written down, right? X in the, in the corresponding homogeneous linear system, x1, x2, and x4 will be dependent variables. x3, x5, and x6 will be free variables. And where we're headed is that we expect the null space of this matrix to be written as a linear combination of three vectors, or similarly, we would expect that the null space of the matrix is a span of three vectors. Okay, so we can concisely see how to do that by writing those vectors z1, z2, and z3 to have ones and zeros in the corresponding free variable spots.
Then we can fill in these other elements with uh, elements from the columns one, sorry, the columns three, five, and six respectively. Okay, so here are those vectors z1, z2, z3 that make up uh, the, the set such that the span of that set forms the null space of the matrix A. Okay, so the null space of A is the span of the set Z1, Z2, and Z3. And, and again, this is just theorem SSNS, the spanning set of a null space in action. Okay, to wrap up this section, let's go ahead and have a look at the set of vectors corresponding to the columns from archetype D. Okay, if we take the matrix D to be the matrix consisting of the columns of the set T, then um, I think we'll see that this vector Z1 is in the null space of that, of that um, matrix D. Okay, in other words, Z1 is a solution of the corresponding homogeneous linear system. So we can see this pretty quickly. Since 2w1 plus 3w2 plus 0w3 plus w4 is 0, we can definitely see that 2, 3, 0, 1 is in the null space of D, right? It's a solution of the homogeneous linear system. Or similarly, we can express w4 as a linear combination of w1 and w2. Now, this has implications for the span of T, right? The span of w1 through w4. In some sense, this tells us that in the span of T, that is the span of the vectors W1 through W4, that W4 is extra, right? Whenever we have W4, we could just replace it instead by negative 2W1 minus 3W2 and get the same span. Are any of the other vectors extra? Well, the answer is yes, as it turns out. And we can see that by noting that this vector z2 is also an element of the sp null space of D. Okay, since w3 is also extra in the span of T, we see that the span of T can be written as the span of w1 and w2. So there's sort of an interesting question here. Uh, one question you might ask is, can we go further? And the answer is no. Um, there's a question of what allowed W3 and W4 to be categorized as extra, and it turns out that, that, um, that the answer to that question is because we can write W3 and W4 as a linear combination of W1 and W2. Okay, and how can we know that W2 is not also extra? Um, that ends up being a question that we can answer in our next section as well. Um, so where we're heading with this is sort of an efficient way to describe a span of vectors without having any extra vectors. All right, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you've um, learned a lot about spanning sets. We'll see you next time.